What's up everyone and welcome to another Warframe video. Yesterday we had the slightly delayed release of the newest endgame mode which is the Deep Archimedia. Digital Extremes have been making a big push recently to give us some harder content so they can drop better rewards and reward those players who like to push their builds and this is the latest mode to do just that. So how does it work? Well you speak to Necroloid in the Sanctum Anatomica after gaining rank 5 with his faction the mode will then give you a selection of 3 frames, 3 primaries, 3 secondaries and 3 melees, 4 modifiers and 3 missions to complete with their own set of modifiers. The missions and individual parameters reset on a Sunday reset time. I'm not entirely sure when the frames and weapons reset, I assume kind of at the same time normally. But the problem is when I completed the solo run you actually see in the background footage my frames and weapons actually switched, so that does require a little more investigation. The way this mode works is that for each of these things activated it will give you more research points and as such more rewards when you complete the set of three missions, which you will actually see at the bottom of the UI exactly what your currently selected modifiers will net you in terms of rewards. Initially, the Elite Archimedia will be locked when you first access the game mode and will only unlock if you complete the set of three missions listed on the right with all of the options selected. That includes frames, weapons and all individual modifiers. That's actually pretty much all there is in terms of how the mode works. I'll leave a link to the patch notes in the description below if you want to see all the modifiers and what they do. There are far too many to go through in this video. Honestly, the mode looks a lot more complicated than it really is, especially if you look at the forums, however, it's really not that scary. The game tells you what to use, select everything, complete the missions. The missions are pretty difficult, especially if you don't get a good selection, so you are able to matchmake for this, and honestly, you probably should, it will make this an awful lot easier. With the mode explained, what do I think of it, and honestly, I'm kind of in two minds about it. The first part of me is saying it's good to have more higher level stuff with the chance to get better rewards. Chasing harder stuff that challenges us and our builds is something I've actually been wanting really for a very long time and this is another step in the right direction. However the other part of me is a little tired of the RNG slot machine of what do I actually get to play today. For me Warframe is at its absolute best when you're able to put together a brilliantly synergistic build, a mix of blade, gun, ability, companion, your operator, absolutely everything that you need to slaughter the enemies. This takes all of that away, all of it, not just a single part, and just tells you what you have to use if you want the best rewards. I understand that we've gotten to be so super powerful right now, it's kind of hard to balance us. And this is rewarding those who have actually taken the time to put max builds on every frame and every weapon, people, people like myself. But the entire mode relies on something which is, for me, a complete non-starter. That everything in the game can deal with level 350 steel path enemies, or 350 to 400 steel path enemies. And that's absolutely not the case. In fact, it's monumentally far from it. There are so many absolute stinker weapons. If you look at my options here, I have no good options for this level whatsoever. I managed to brute force my way through the first part to unlock the elite level with my Prisma Oma, but in the end, none of the weapons were strong enough to deal with the elite level. And that's half the problem here. If you get screwed like I did, there is nothing you can do. That's your lot, and you have to hope the other people in your squad can carry you through. There is a rather amusing thing right now though that you can actually be in a mission with someone without a single modifier active. So they can bring whatever they want and have no negative effects on them, making them as powerful as they would be in any mission, aside from the sort of individual modifiers forced on them from the missions themselves. So right now you can actually duo this mode pretty effectively. One person with a build just to slaughter the entire world and the other using a fully modified loadout to get the most out of the game mode rewards. To me it feels a little out of the spirit of the mode, but hey, at the moment it works fantastically well, so while it exists, absolutely do this. You can even have a bit of a sort of let me solo her situation here like in Elden Ring, and be that guy who joins the mission with no modifiers active and help those who do. It's kind of a little bit of an interesting dynamic. With all this said though, I had a real roller coaster ride learning the new mode. 
I had a number of frustrating moments from getting one shot from 5,000 hit points multiple times to getting knocked down and killed before getting up to finally figuring out the build I actually needed to complete this, putting that build on and then completing my solo run. It's worth noting though that D has actually very much said that this is not supposed to be soloed or is not designed to be soloed. But obviously, it's a new mode. I had to absolutely take on that challenge, especially when we're told it's not supposed to be. I actually got a lot of mileage out of the newly changed Eclipse, which is something that really, really surprised me. I thought I was going to use Roar and that would be it. But the ability to toggle between damage and defense is incredibly useful because you need to be very careful. There is a number of things that do silly damage, none more so than the shooty Necromech. That thing can absolutely shred you before you can even react. They also take a huge punishment too, massively, massively reduced damage from your weapons. So trying to kill them can be super tough. Being able to toggle to defensive Eclipse to survive the mech was invaluable and not something I thought I'd be doing given the changes to Eclipse recently. I'll be honest, I ended up dropping the melee for my trusty pennant purely because the 50 boss fur for the absolute top reward for me isn't something I was actually worried about for my solo run. I will just do that separately later. Honestly though, that 50 Vospa gives you one additional relic pack per month, which as a top end reward, I'll be honest, I am not hugely worried about. As for the rewards, it does have the potential to be kind of lucrative. Three chances at some Tower Forged Archon shards when they're listed as common, as well as some of the rarer arcanes. Although to me, honestly, the Tower Forged is the item I want the most, so you can actually guess exactly how many of those I got. But in all honesty, the rewards from this are actually pretty good. So in general, I think the game mode is decent. It's got a very good level of difficulty, it's got fantastic rewards, but personally, I don't like the RNG roulette of the random loadouts, and the problem that sort of brings with it, especially regarding the fact that not every weapon is suitable for this level. And if RNG decides it, you're going to need to be carried by someone with a better kit. And honestly, that is not a particularly feel-good moment. Letting me pitch my frames against all these modifiers without the punishment of worse rewards would definitely have been nice. You'd still have to play around with the modifiers that you activate on yourself, but not limited by the game giving you rubbish to work with. I had to change my Grendel build a number of times actually, and play around with a couple of different helmets to be able to complete this solo. Obviously, in a group, that's not necessarily going to be exactly the same, but solo, I had to modify my build quite a few times. And this is a build I run quite a bit, especially on uh, my other frames like in Aros as well. It's just a brick build with my pennant for heals. So that shows that even with builds that you may generally use in the rest of the content, it may take some tweaking and thought to be able to deal with those modifiers. I, I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are in the comments below. How are you finding it and what do you like and what do you not like? But for now, I hope you have a fantastic day. Enjoy the new mode and I shall catch you in the next video.